Good evening, I'm David Ferris, and welcome to this week's edition of Chamber Buzz. Our special guests tonight are Jeff Tobias and Phil Dixon, and they're here to talk to us about Springboard. Roger G. Taylor and Associates. Let's check out Rocky Mountain, see what's going on around town. Again, I'd like to pass along my congratulations because as small business, that is a major impact on any community and uh, Cabin Davenport Inc. has certainly been a, a, a long-standing member of the chamber and active in the community. And Richard, uh, this is one of 11 uh, each year that we look at and next month we will actually be presenting the small business of the year award and uh, that'll be at the gateway center uh in june and we look forward to reviewing yours because you're in <laughs> and uh you're in you're one of the final 11 men you're almost in the top 10 right now but anyway we congratulate you and i ask you to say a little something about your firm uh, i'd like to thank the chamber for selecting um, us as um a small business of the month. Um, Calvin Davenport's been in business um, almost um, 50 years. Uh, we were incorporated in 64, all in Nash County and Rocky Mount. Um, we've grown from a small outfit where one car and a handsaw and a hammer was what we started with to uh, a company that operates in uh, better part of three states. Um, like to um, uh, thank all of y'all for the opportunity. Uh, we would not be here if it weren't for uh, Nash County and Rocky Mount supporting us over the years and um, also uh, a business is no better than the people that work for us and I have a fine set of employees that um, that work for us and um, I'm grateful for that and, and blessed to have that so uh, in saying that thank you so much and I look forward to accepting my reward um, or award next month thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Phil, again, thank y'all for joining us uh, this evening. Sure. And tell us a little about, about Springboard. You know, Rocky Mount has always been such a hotbed for entrepreneurs. Right. And this seems to be a way to help mm -hmm. that situation continue. Sure, sure. Talk to us a little about it. You want me to? Um, well, it, Springboard is just an extension of that kind of the hotbed uh, kind of idea that you mentioned. It's really a, uh, um, it's a growth off of the near, you know, near Northeast right. Entrepreneur Roundtable, which is really kind of the impetus for this. But um, the whole idea is to, to support what we really believe is our, the area's greatest natural resource, which is the spirit of entrepreneurialism. And um, uh, we really feel like there's this, you know, that you can't have enough support for the entrepreneurs in the area. And so, uh, what we strive to do is be a resource hub for local entrepreneurs, um, be a, 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 a organization that creates a community of entrepreneurs, and one that helps find um, funding for these entrepreneurs. And so, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is take what the area already has, which again is this kind of wellspring of entrepreneurism, and, um, and help that grow and, and be a, a permanent part of our economic development. Sounds great. Yeah. So we're doing that, and we're partnering with a bunch of organizations that are already exist today, right? That uh, whether they're regional or local and trying to uh, create an ecosystem where things uh, are more seamless yeah. to entrepreneurs uh, and tie those things together so that the resources are less confusing and there's a, a path. Yeah. In, in trying to get investors, how, how do you reach out to people that, that may be interested in, in investing in the yeah. Springboard. Well, the, the first way is presenting ideas that are investable, you know, things that uh, are worthwhile. Um, so, you know, it's really kind of the chicken and egg problem. If the first, you know, you, you, you really want to help procure and develop uh, ideas that these entrepreneurs are, you know, are all around us, these entrepreneurs who have great ideas, kind of bring these to a central place and then can present that to the investor. Um, the other is just developing, you know, kind of a list of, of investors. Um, 
that uh, you know say they're interested in, in, in um, being introduced these uh, these ideas to them. So um, you got to work it from both sides, I'd say. Yeah. So we we've, we've kind of focused on several components of uh, capital and funding for entrepreneurs and how that stacks up in terms of you know how do you go about uh, getting private money, commercial, um, venture, and of course you know, relying on your personal funds and right. family. So we're putting in a series of programs together that focus on that and we'll have speakers that uh, attend events and uh, talk to those points. So I think the, the impetus for Springboard uh, is, was somewhat originated from the need for that. Having talked to several entrepreneurs, it, it really is, when you talk to them, the thing that they think they need the most. And, and yes, it is something that entrepreneurs certainly need. Um, it's top of their mind. Uh, but as we dug deeper and, and thought through, you know, what does Springboard do? What does it look like? Uh, we felt like the organization needed to do more than just be able to help entrepreneurs get funding. So that's where we look at the advisory services and also bring together the community of entrepreneurs. And that's kind of our Springboard ecosystem. And then our partner program is kind of around this, the internal Springboard ecosystem. Where do you, where do you do get, develop um, the advisors? Where do they come from? Good question. So we're, we're in the process of, of developing a network of advisors. And right now we've partnered with SCORE, uh, who does that already. And then there are uh, several local professionals that provide these services um, you know, as, as their small business, right? So we're calling on uh, local uh, advisors, consultants, SCORE, and Keenan is also helping us do that. So Keenan, Keenan Institute Private Enterprise, yep. KITE is the uh, acronym. Yep. They're helping us uh, source advisors and they're also uh, helping us put together the advisory program. One of the programs that we're kicking off here uh, the next month or so will be the Entrepreneur Executive Roundtable. Yeah. And that's basically for, for peer groups, uh, putting together peer groups mm -hmm. to get together and discuss common challenges and right. brainstorming and, and getting some advice and facilitation from springboard advisors. Yeah. And, you know, we do all that with that, you know, keeping in mind that we, you know, we also have a large, kind of a, a large community of entrepreneurs like yourself who successfully run businesses who would be willing to, to kind of give their advice and time and, and, and uh, wisdom to kind of impart that upon the younger generation of entrepreneurs who, uh, you know, could use that to kind of expedite or accelerate their own businesses. So um, it's like you mentioned earlier, Rocky Mount, you know, we've got, uh, you know, that, that's really kind of our MO is, is we are, at least our belief, we're kind of the home of the entrepreneur. Um, I think that's a, that, that's a great way to frame this. And, uh, you know, the, it's that way, it, it, we're that city for a reason is because we have successful entrepreneurs. So tapping into that, into that community is, is also vital to what we're doing. And you know, the, the, the beauty of the entrepreneurs that we've, we've enjoyed throughout probably most of the incorporated time of Rocky Mount. Yeah. Um, it goes back beyond, you know, Hardy seems to be the thing that everybody remembers, but it goes beyond that with our banks, and right. the people, the planters, and right. the, the mills that were grown here. Yep. Um, and the, the one common thread that I've found woven through regardless of the industry is the willingness of those men and women mm -hmm. who were successful. Right. They've shared their, right. their thoughts, their resources, right. both uh, their minds and their money, oh, if yeah. you will. That's right. um, been very generous in, in doing that. Oh, yeah. And that, that I well, think this is. Yeah, you know, born out in the, in the near in that Northeast mm -hmm. Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur Roundtable, uh, Mayo body and, and um, you know that group um, so successful entrepreneurs you know looking to give back. I mean that's that's where Near started. You know is is right. trying to uh, kind of bring other entrepreneurs along. And um, so we're, again we're really trying to kind of carry the baton of, of what they started. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm I'm 
so glad to hear that because you know people like you mentioned may obadi and his late brother nick yeah um they have been so generous in supporting things like that yeah. they've lent themselves to it personally and not just their resources but they're that's right you know they, they've gotten involved in it and you know i think that's just kind of the spirit of of, of our twin county areas if i'm successful in something i won't that's right. I want to help you be successful. Sure. I don't want to be out there by myself. Yeah, I agree completely. It seems like it's a, a very it easy sell when you start talking about selling community service to someone to go sell it to a successful entrepreneur to help yeah. an up and coming entrepreneur because it's obviously something it that's in their blood and their hey. DNA. That's right. Uh, and they're already successful. So there's wisdom, advice, and uh, yeah. money, of right. course. But uh, it, it seems to be a very easy sell, yeah. and, and people are very so. generous with their time and their money. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break right now, and when we come back, we're going to talk about maybe the steps that a entrepreneur would take to go through your program. Great. So we'll be right back. As always, our good friends at Roger G. Taylor & Associates sponsor the weekly Chamber Buzz. And Roger, we thank you and your team. Guys, um, you know, again, we talked about Hardy's uh, uh, in the first segment. Mm -hmm. When Jim Gardner and Leonard Rawls were getting Hardy's started, yeah. um, you know, they had vision. Uh, they were quick to realize that this, this thing could really do well. And like most businesses, you can expand, and then it gets better and better and better. And before you realize that you need help, yeah. you need you need advice, but you need capital. Yeah. And probably back in the days in the early '60s when they were, they were starting off, it was maybe easier then to visit your local friendly bank. And the world has changed. And secure resources and you had friends that were willing to invest in it and it's not probably that simple and I'm probably oversimplifying it yeah. from what Jim and Leonard had to go through but you know the long and the short of it it is more difficult to 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 find money right. so if somebody has a, a solid business plan and they want help they want some advice and they want an opportunity to get capital but a typical bank is not ready for them and they're not ready for the bank. What do you do? And who do you have helping you? Who's behind all this? I'll let you take the funding side of it. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the first half of the question. Okay. You can take the second half. But uh, as a banker, I, um, I know all too well. There's not everyone that walks through my door is... No. It's a bankable deal, you know, it's a bankable customer. It could be a um, great idea, but it's, the track record's not there. Right, at, the, at that moment. Right. Yeah, and they could be, you know, two years from then. Right. But the question, and to your, I guess your question is, how do you get from then down how the do road to, to when you... two years? Right, so I can right. Walk in well, I, the, and the, I can the, say, Jeff, here's right. my track record, and I need That's X right. dollars. Well, the first piece is obviously having a great idea. You know, you can't overlook the, you know, the importance of having an idea that is that yeah it, it is potentially profitable and something that is is worth investing in. So, you know, not every idea you know, can you just go to you know, your friends and, and the community and get and get uh, funding for because it may not be something that is worthwhile. But if it is, um, I, you know, the, you'd obviously start with your your family. You know, the folks who have known you the longest, who believe in you. Um, you know, I, I tell a lot of people who walk through you know, my door at the bank. You know, don't be afraid to ask those people that you know really well, um, those people kind of know your character. You know, those are the first people who, right. who would, would believe in your idea. And so I go there first. Um, so, you know, once you kind of exhaust that option, then you come to a springboard. You know, we are, you know, what we're looking to be is kind of a collection agent for all the, kind of all the, as Philip says, kind of silent money in Rocky Mountain, the folks who are looking for good ideas. Um, looking for something to invest in. So you go to an organization like Springboard or you go to you know, kind of another angel network that perhaps you know about um, and you bring what should be a pretty highly developed business plan, something that you have thought backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards 
and um, you explain that, that idea to the best of your ability. So um, there is private money out there, but you, you've got to, you know, before you, you know, you, after you tap your family and before you go to it, you really should have a, a pretty strong business plan and a strong idea of how that business gonna, is going to make, make money and, you know, it, what's going to happen if it doesn't exactly hit the most, the rosiest of projections. So, um, you know, I, again, being kind of bold and, and uh, persistent um, are two things that any entrepreneur looking to grow or you know, start or grow their business should have because um, you're going to get a lot of no's before you get some of those yeses. So, I'm sure. uh, knocking, on, knocking on the door. Um, sales, right? Exactly. <laughs> Just selling anything. Yeah. <laughs> knocking on the door is is vital to, to raising capital and selling, you know, it just, as, it just as it is to selling your product. Yeah. So who's behind Springboard? Uh, right now there's seven board members uh, and then we formalized three or four committees. Uh, and so right now it's, it's all volunteer. And part of that is our, part of our strategy is partnering, right? So we can rely on other resources that already have programs in place. Uh, so the board members volunteering their time uh, for the uh, mm -hmm. startup uh, services and the advisory services and putting on the events uh, to facilitate the entrepreneur community. Um, in terms of who's behind it from a funding standpoint, uh, that, that's something that we're still working yeah. on. I mean, th like I Jeff would think said, that would be continuous. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a work in progress always. Phil, um, Tell us, if you can, who the board members are and also some of the key organizations that, that, are, that are participating in, in uh, Springboard. Absolutely. Uh, so Jeff and myself are on the board, uh, Larry McAdams, Mark Froman, Allison Sykes, John Guessman, and Duncan Gibson. I would say you have an A team. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was kind of the idea was <laughs> no. to assemble one of those, especially when you're... a very talented group of group of leaders yeah. very talented I'm impressed absolutely that's a good good group so along with uh, the board uh, John Guestman Carolina Gateway Partnership has been instrumental to helping Springboard get off the ground we meet at John's facilities or the partnerships facilities and uh, that's the home of Springboard yeah. uh, right now and we've held several meetings there uh, a couple events and um, John's helped with some of the expenses to uh, marketing, website development, right. uh, those types of things. Next in line from an organizational standpoint, uh, Wesleyan has been in instrumental in helping us uh, fund the development of the initial website, which will be going live in the next two to three weeks. Right. Um, and they are a, a strategic partner of ours, ongoing, obviously tying the educational mm -hmm. aspect of entrepreneurship, continuing education, but the students coming out of that college, we want to retain that talent here right. in Rocky Mount. Sure. Right. And uh, hopefully they'll start businesses here or go into a successful entrepreneurial right. business. Uh, NEAR, as Jeff mentioned earlier, is uh, helped us kind of initially uh, meet and get together and, and pull some uh, young, interested, interested talent into uh, the mix. And we had a lot of meetings uh, after that, that led to the inception of Springboard. Uh, who else am I missing from a Keenan. organization? Yeah, Keenan. Keenan Institute of Private Enterprise. Uh, they're helping us put together the uh, E and E Roundtable, which is the Entrepreneur and Executive Roundtable. Yeah. And that'll be uh, again peer groups working together, and that's part of the, the grant that Keenan has, and they're focused on the Northeast region or the East region of North Carolina, and that includes 18 counties. Don't ask me to list those. Right. I wouldn't, but we all sadly are too familiar with that region of the state. Right. And it needs, yeah. it needs this kind of program. It needs this kind of nourishment. That's right. right. So we've got help from those folks, among others, really. Mm -hmm. Vanessa yeah. McClear at downtown City. Yeah, redevelopment has, has participated as well. So, and yeah, Teresa here. And the Teresa chamber, Pinto, right, absolutely. Um, so anyway, it's like we had talked about, everyone has an interest in a economic development and then, you know, how does that happen? You know, obviously supporting the entrepreneurs of the, the area is, is one of the key components of that. So everyone has an interest kind of by extension sure. in helping support the, the local entrepreneurs. So. Well, I think y'all have assembled, just done a tremendous job of assembling a great board, a great support staff, right. you know, starting with, with Gateway Partnership, Wesleyan, yeah. you know, own and own and own. And it, it 
can't help but be successful. And you know, we've we talked about this earlier in the show. This has been such a unique part of the state with growing the entrepreneurs like like Rocky Mount has and the Twin County area has. Yeah. And you know, the one thing about success like we've enjoyed, you you always think, well, are we running out of it? Yeah. I don't think so. I agree. I saw Jim Gardner on a segment on WHIG several months ago. It was right before the election. And he reflected about the diversity in Rocky Mount industry and banking and so forth and food services and how things have changed here. Yeah. And he looked he looked at the camera and he smiled and he said, we're not finished. That's right. You know, it's, right. We're, we're, we're coming back. We're figuring out what we're going to do next, and we're coming back. And that, you know, that was just great. That's right. That was great. And I thank you. I thank your board. I thank your your key supporters for for doing that. And I thank them not just from my standpoint, but everybody in Twin Counties, because it is. It's going to make our region that much better. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And Phil and Jeff, I thank y'all both for taking time out of your schedule to join us this evening. And I know it's been enlightening for our viewers at home. And we thank you, and we look forward to hearing some success stories. And for the next big strike. Right. Well, thank, thank you for having us. Thank y'all. Thank you. It. And thank you, audience, for tuning in tonight. Hope you have a nice evening.